having this uh, you are almost ready by like this so 2015. And what we did, I've been teaching in Reiki, I've been teaching a lot of spiritual development programs. And at one point of time, I started feeling that unless it comes into a day-to-day -day life, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. And that was our effort since last 20 years. We started uh, programs for the young generation. The simple reason, we have been doing with, uh, some research from 2004 till last year. And we studied about 10,000 people. 9,000 in India, 1,000 in North. And realize that the new generation is totally different than what the earlier generations were. And this is not a generation gap, this is something which is structural gap. And after a lot of research on this with so many scientists and socialists, we realize the new generation is, uh, normally we have a DNA which actually runs us. And DNA is supposed to have 12 strands, out of which two are active in our generation. And they say every 26,000 years, there's evolution. The DNA structure changes, which is likely to have happened between 1980 and 1990. And the basic structural change is the third strand has got activated. And which is what is today's generation after 1985-90. What the traits they're showing is totally different than the traits of the earlier generations ever in the last 26,000 years. They're extremely intellectual, but very low on mind, extremely low on emotions. And that explains a lot of things what we are seeing all around, including the crime, violence, and everything around. And when we talk to a lot of educationists, and we have been hired by the Gujarat government in India, we were also uh, we are advising the defense ministry. Because those who are born in 85, 90, they have started coming to the workforce from last few years. They are showing totally different traits in business, in uh, government, in army, in police. And we have been helping them to find out exactly what has happened now. Uh, what is happening to their level of consciousness. And uh, we must have already conducted programs in about 200 schools, colleges, universities, including MS University in Baroda and all. Talking to the chancellors and vice chancellors. The problem is this, uh, India is going between 2020 and 2050. India is going to be the largest population of youth in the world for 30 years. And if this youth is not given the proper directions, then probably I think the country can go to dogs. And if we can, probably the country could be at the top of the world. So we are in some kind of a transition period as a country, as a nation. And we started creating those awareness programs and parents, teachers, administration, governance. And we have been regularly doing these programs for uh, various segments, that is, as far as the children is concerned. Then we started teaching them in a different way. You know, we call it IQ program, moving from information to knowledge to experience to wisdom, IQ. And we have been advising a lot of teachers and education institutes to follow a certain kind of a changes in the educational policy. In fact, the government has just coming out of the draft, they have they sent us new education plans. And they are trying to implement a lot of suggestions that we make. Because they cannot be taught in a conventional way. They hardly like to attend the college and the schools. Because the mind is very weak, and all those education uh, philosophies of the past, they are based on a particular mindset and a particular set of human being, which doesn't work now. So this is one area where we started working from 2012, we started conducting certain programs in Arashram, bringing the children between 8 and 12 and 12 to 14 and youth empowerment programs. And that was somewhere at the back of the mind, but this is not only, because we, I've been teaching in university also, for six, seven years we used to come in the interface program in Northeastern University, work with the deans and so on. And we also conducted one in the parenting program, one of, one of the years, about four years ago. And then we decided to do something here, and we found it with the help of Dr. John NGED, New Generation Development Inc. And we have a parallel organization in India called Devruk Spiritual Prowess Private Limited. So we just entered into a tab with them. Because there are certain restrictions of starting something in America, starting something in collaboration. 
here we are trying to bring those programs. And the first program is between 7 and 12 for the children in the age group of 9 to 13. At the same time, you know, we did a lot of youth empowerment programs in the last few years to bring those big children above 14 and between 19 and between 19 and 25. So to show them a particular direction in life, they have been working beautifully, taking them closer to the nature, breaking through the classwork. And we uh, launched a couple of programs which are of social interest. One was for wise woman in its self-empowerment. And here we are also working jointly with the uh, RSS has started a new week of ladies. Okay. Dr. Rashali Joshi And they want us to teach about 80 lakh women in India. Oh. They want to, because no, we are talking about who is talking to Rashali. She's a doctor. The moment she became doctor, she did. 80 lakh? 80 lakh. 80 lakh. They have a huge organization. It's a parallel organization like Alice's. They have a convention now in September. World countries. Launching this. We have brought some of them, Rudra and all. They are also teaching. They come in a big way. So, this particular program is about, we are trying to tell the women what the inner abilities they have. Which they are not exploiting. We want them to explore. So they all want to be like the males. They don't have to. So all that traditional knowledge today, I feel that every house it is a woman who is stressful, 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 and that stress actually is reflected into the houses and the societies in the world at large. So we have a detailed study about what the woman spiritually is, what psychologically she is. And if she can uh, work on that particular basis, I think it is in the interest of the whole universe. So this is one program called WISE, Women in Its Self-Empowerment, which we are trying to do here on 10th and 11th, to bring out uh, the basic core competence. The second one is about the uh, Golden Lotus program. I think we did some programs here, Santosh Kumar. Yes. Uh, a few years ago, for some senior citizens. In fact, you know, I think we had uh, some uh, that that, you know. yeah. Because using Reiki, I have found in the olden age, normally what happens is people feel, many people, many of the old people say, oh, I don't have energy. When they say that, we tell them that you are not understood the law of energy. Energy cannot go out. It has just transferred into spiritual energy of the intellectual energy. It should be used by you people. So when we teach them Reiki, what happens is basically they remain fit. No more. So they are free from a lot of diseases which yes, normal. Yeah, people. everybody has a problem. Secondly, when they start giving Reiki to the people and heal them, they suddenly realize that I'm important, I'm not useless. The whole idea that I'm useless, I'm not required by the world, it's a scary. And that creates a lot of mental blockages. The thirdly, uh, what we say that uh, normally say they have a uh, lot of time. So they can start Reiki Arugya Mandis to heal people as a community. And fourth thing, I mean, normally I mean, we have been saying that old age people, they pass out of this world with a lot of bitterness. You know, blaming the whole world, blaming the son and the daughter-in-law and the people at home. So we create that awareness using the karmic theory. That is nobody to be blamed except us. It is our own karmas we are creating this. And wherever we are done, in, in Maharashtra we are done with Sharad Pawar's uh, Baramati Vrudashram, old age. That is where we actually started. And uh, various uh, old age uh, houses, they call it old age homes there. And, and uh, that is just exactly what uh, we wanted to do here, to talk to the old people, tell them about uh, uh, what Reiki can do for them, how they can manage their health in every sense, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. And uh, I think Janathan by you attended one last week, the Golden Lotus Program. We had about two days program, residential program. And they just enjoy it. They just like it. <laughs> and what is happening I mean, after about say 55, 60, their role yeah, has changed. All, all people are sick with you know, Their role has changed. And they need to maintain that role. They have a lot of spiritual energy. They need to work on the spiritual or the emotional aspects. So we not only educate them, we educate their people at home how to utilize their energies in a proper way. If I have the spiritual energy, I cannot do physical work because I don't have physical energy left. But someday that appropriateness in the life is lost. So this whole program is basically 
taking them in the whole course of action. So whatever you are doing is already at that particular stage. Now we need to change your activities to suit your energy level. And so this is one program called Golden Lotus Program. So we are, we are trying to cover the various segments of the society. Because see, what has happened when you look at the materialism in the spirituality, there are four quadrants if you do the XY quadrants. The first is basically spiritual people for the spiritual experiences, like Siddha sitting in Himalayas and mountains. They must have done a good job. They must have possibly attained their uh, liberation. But if you look at the society at large, it doesn't seem to be much benefited. The second quadrant is about material people for the material approach. They, they have created more mess, with the corruptions and all that stuff you see. The third angle, if you look at the new age gurus, what they call them, they have brought uh, the materialism into spirituality. They have ashrams, 500 acre ashram, 20 ashram, 1 million people, still the numbers. And the fourth uh, squadron which is open, which we are targeting is bringing spirituality to day-to-day -day life. When I am talking to you, I should be talking to you as a soul. Somewhere, unless it becomes a part of our life, it is not going to be meaningful. So we are, we are placing ourselves into that quadrant. And all these activities are basically like that. Spirituality doesn't mean, and we have been advising, we have a module for retirement. Retirement doesn't mean cessation of activities. It's a cessation of reactions, not actions. You should continue your actions, but don't react. Withdraw from the reaction. Chitta vrutti nirodha, what Patanjali says. So we have been working more on that. Yeah. So then they should know, I mean, that as you talk about the third and the fourth Vanaprastha and the Sannyasa Ashram, the fourth stage is all. See, Vanaprastha Ashram being in the house, but still, you are, you, are, you are at the back and call. Whenever the new generation wants, you should be there. But how to maintain that distance? How to maintain that, <coughs> your reactions? So that is something which we talk about, managing emotions, managing mind. So this is a, just a, in short, all that we are trying to cover, right from the child, we are working certain things with the ladies who are in pregnancy, how to manage the pregnancy. After Reiki, we have found uh, if a lady gets uh, Reiki right from the conception to the delivery, she has a wonderful pregnancy. We have got 55 cases out of which 51 went into natural delivery even in today's world. And the children are so different and probably creating a new world with a new generation. We believe in, I mean, once a terrorist is born, a terrorist is born, Hardly have choices. Your major choice is in nine months, so the terrorism is not gone at all. So somewhere we need to work on that. And this is a massive work. You start it somewhere. And hopefully at one point of time, I think it should be spreading to the world. So this is our efforts. <coughs> this in short is what I can say various segments of what we have been doing. Uh,